Check the description for the following discount codes. So I've been running this bezel free kit now, probably for, I don't know, a few weeks, and I'm still undecided as to whether I like to have it installed or not. I'll show you just quite, I mean, you've probably seen reviews of these before, so I won't hang about with this sort of end of things, but I'll just quickly show you what comes in the kit just in case there's a few of you that haven't actually seen a review of these before or even know what they do. But what they do, um, in fact, I've just left the lenses over there, one sec. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Organized as ever. So what they do is they're designed really for monitors that are no higher than this, which I think is 28, 28 inch monitors, something like that. Anyway, um, and you, where, you, where you join them together to make your triple setup, like you see in the background, you put these over the join. And they're basically like, they're, they're lenses, lenticular lenses, and they stretch the image from one monitor to the other over where the bezel is underneath this, and it basically gets rid of the bezel. You can't see it at all, which is great. But it does stretch the image, and this is where the problem occurs, what I'm not so happy about. Um, to do the setup on mine, I actually have to join to end to end, and they're just this sort of quite flexible plastic lenses, so probably reasonably easy to scratch. You should be a little bit careful you know, when you handle these and not be too harsh. They are labelled, each one's got a little picture uh, for left monitor. Um, in fact, this is also a left monitor because I've taken them off of my left hand side for the video I'm about to show you. I've left my right hand side ones on so that we can do literally an AB comparison. One half of my setup has the bezels on display and the other half has these. So we can sort of compare the two differences. They come with these little sort of brackets. Uh, the lenses slot through here. You squeeze this piece here to release it as you slide it in and out. And then this is, these pieces at the back here, just if my hand was the back of my monitor, it just slides up and it clamps around the back like that, squeezing the lens against the front of the two monitors where they join. Really simple, and you get you know an appropriate amount of those, four of those per kit. Each of these kits is about 200 quid. I've obviously had to buy, no, were they? No, they weren't, about 125 quid. I had to buy two and it was about 240, 250 quid or something like that. Yeah, I think, I think they're about 120 notes each. Anyway, so we'll come with a left and a right-handed lens and four of these little brackets in this box with some instructions. And there's also a little piece of paper in here. In fact, I haven't pushed it out. This, this piece of cardboard here, that pops out and it's got some degree measurements on it to show you or to allow you to put your monitors at the correct angle for these to work. Now I've got my monitors at 70 degrees or it might be 65 now I had to change them for various reasons. Um, but they work just fine um, with no problems at all. So that's what you get in the box. That's how they fit on these literally just squeeze this and you slot it down. Do you squeeze it or do you? Yeah, you do squeeze it. You squeeze it and you slot this in like that and it stays in there no problem and then you'd have one at the top as well. So let's now get over to the rig. I'm gonna try and cap I'm trying to put this camera in such a position that you'll see the bezel where the left monitor joins and then the bezel free kit where the right monitor joins. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the two and you'll see why I'm sort of undecided as to whether I'm gonna keep them on there or not. Yeah, that's all right, I think you can see everything. So there's the bezel free kit on this side and obviously here is our bezel on this side you can quite play yeah you can see them well enough and at first glance the bezel free kit definitely looks the way to go now i'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera i may have to try and zoom in in post and, and try and illustrate it and it may even be my head angle camera might not see it the same as what i do but here's the problem i've got if we look down here where my door card sort of joins over the bezel free kit. From the angle I'm sat at, that joins really smoothly. There's no step, no obvious join. It looks really good. If I actually get in here, then you can see it's a little bit off. But from where I'm seated, which is how you configure it, that joins really, really nicely. Uh, and if you look up to the left-hand side, 
the curves of the dashboard, the sort of swage lines of the dash, the rear view mirror, that all joins nice and straight exactly as it should as well. And there's obviously no bezel free kit there. The problem with the bezel free kit is as we start to look up the height of the monitors here, things start to go from being lined up to stepping apart. It's almost like the higher you go up, the bigger the step is. So like the very top of the mirror there is just not quite lined up as it should be. And then when you see the railing here, there's a very noticeable step now. And I'll, I'll drive around in a minute and we'll focus on the railing a bit better. But if you continue looking up and you can see the power lines at the top there, from where I'm seated, they are a good 10 mil apart from what this obviously isn't 10 mil, I'm exaggerating with my hands, but they're a good 10 mil apart from one another, very noticeable step. And then at the very top of the A pillar, where it's red, this painted section here, at the very top there, there's like a huge half inch separation. So this is the problem. If I was to line up like the barrier or the power cable, so they are in line, the top of my door card here would then have a massive step in it, as would you know the edge of the mirror as it joins there. You can't have it all lined up at once for whatever reason. It must be something to do with the way the lenses work. Whereas of course on this side, where there is no bezel free kit, everything, all the swage lines of the dash, line up the mirror, the barrier in the background, the background itself, people, whatever, it's not a problem. Uh, and that looks much, much nicer. So not only does everything line up that side and it doesn't this side, and you could only have kind of like one area lined up, when you're driving along, let's just actually get the car moving. Um, is when cars come past, they obviously warp and distort as well. It's not so bad because you're not really focusing on them. But it is, I know it's there and it sort of triggers my OCD a little bit because I know it shouldn't be like it. Um, let's just get round to a bit here. I can show you the separation in the barrier. I mean, can, yeah, you can. Oh, it's right in the middle there. Let's keep going a little bit. But this is why I'm torn about whether I'm going to keep them or not. Because for some things, yeah, they work. So here we go. Again, I'll zoom in on this if need be. There is a massive step there now. The barrier literally looks like it's broken like this. Um, and again, if you don't focus on it, you don't really notice it. But the other side of the car, everything's all still exactly lined up as it should. The barrier transitions smoothly from one screen to the other, as does the mirror and again, the swage lines, the wipers, everything as it should do. This side, my door card still looks good. Bottom of the mirror looks good. Then the higher up you get, the more out of alignment it seems to be until you get right to the top. Again, where that A pillar is very much, well, it's not even the A pillar, it's the inside of the door technically, is very much, you know, separated from the rest, but this is why I'm unsure. So now, see now we've, we've kind of changed angles, and so now the top of the mirror there has got a bigger step in it, and in fact the bottom of the mirror has got a step in it as well, and even now my door card has a slight step in it. So as the, the sort of orientation of the car and the graphics are changing, the alignment of things don't stay true. Again, we look at this side, everything is still perfectly lined up like it should be. So it's something to do with the way the lenses bend the image from one screen to the other. So I'm, I mean, let me just, let's restart the race so you can see some cars come past me just for that. Or me go past some cars, one or the other, you never know what might happen. Um, yeah, if you focus on the right hand side there and watch, watch that car, as it sort of warps, so the roof line of the car, it's got a big step in it. And again, unless you're looking over there, you don't notice too much because you're mostly looking forward. It's only really when you sort of turn your head and look to, to one side that you, that you may notice it. But it is there, you know, and the other side, yes, we've got a constant bezel sort of running down the middle of the screen. Because it's constant, because it doesn't change, you can almost forget about it. Almost like it's just another A pillar, you know, at the front of your car there, or an upright windscreen wiper, or something like that. So this is this is why I'm a little bit torn as to what to do. And I've had these on here for a few weeks now. And if I don't look at them, I'm like, yeah, yeah, go with the bezel free kits, Carl. When I then look over there and see all the all the different steps, as things are gradually not lined up, I'm like, oh, that's really annoying. And now I've taken this side off 
for the video, it's the first time in a few weeks, I can now really notice, I can really notice the, uh, the bezels. Um, you know, it'll probably take a while for those to sort of blend into the background. And so they're super noticeable now, but I like the fact that everything meets up perfectly and transitions from one screen to the next, just like it should. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I just thought, um, I'd mention this again, you can see it here because we're at a slight uphill now, the mirror doesn't line up properly for whatever reason. And the door card has also gone slightly out of whack. So I don't know why that is, um, but it's obviously something to do with, with the lenses. Oh, you can see me, all right, that's fine. So I'm just, I'm just torn. I don't know what to do yet. I mean, I've got, to, I've got to move these monitors. I've got to raise them all up um, this afternoon. So the bezel kits are coming off anyway. I've got to take the roof off and my other bits and pieces out of the way so I can raise it all up. So I have the option to not put them back or I have the option to fit them again. And they're not, they're not fitted in a permanent fashion. I've got one bracket at the bottom. I've got a little self-adhesive clip at the top. And in the middle there, they're basically just sitting one on top of another. It's going to be hard to explain. They're sitting like that, and I've got a piece of string in between them with a knot tied in the end that then goes back through where the two monitors join, and I've just pulled the string taut enough to hold them both in place. Uh, to be honest, they've stayed there for three weeks, so that actually works quite well. But there is like a, a one pixel sort of line in the middle that, that hasn't got the bezel-free kit over it. But again, you don't notice because it's so small. Sort of equivalent to the thickness of the string, which is very thin. But yeah, I've got to take this off. So, I'm not sure, I think I'm probably going to put them back because unless you look at them, you don't notice this stepping. Um, and I think that's probably less noticeable in use than what the bezel is on the other side. But, you know, I thought it's just something worth showing everyone because it may bother you. And again, if you're perhaps using smaller screens, certainly ones where you're not even using the full length for the bezel free kit, that stepping may not be a thing because it seems to, you know, if you get it lined up down the bottom here, and you can see, yeah, you can still see, down the bottom there, it is quite a way up the bezel free lens before it starts to drift out. And obviously I've played around with, you know, the, the settings in the different sims to try and align things properly and what have you. And as I say, you, you can align certain parts and then everything else is out. So it's a choice of what you want aligned. And I always go for the door card because to me, and the mirror, that, that sort of lower area, because to me that stands out the most because it's a constant in your field of view the whole time you're racing because you're in that car. The scenery around you changes, power cables, barriers, even the, the horizon line where it joins the sea, that all changes. So I prefer to have the car look as correct as it can do inside and have the step in elsewhere. But yeah, so that's that's my review of, um, of the ASUS ROG bezel free kit. It, it works, but not without its caveats. Um, and, uh, and it would be nice if they were a bit cheaper as well. 120 odd quid is quite pricey. But anyway, there will be some links in the description if you fancy picking a set up, a pair up or four up, if like me, you've got large monitors and giving them a try. But just bear that in mind. It won't look perfect the whole way through. If it did, if there wasn't for that step in, the slight distortion where it warps things would 100% be livable and I wouldn't even be mentioning it really other than to say it's, it's there. Um, but because of the, the bloody step in, it may bother some people uh, like it does me. But anyway, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.